I'm Carmen, and I'm a retired data management specialist. I now consider myself to be a hoarder. I've moved into my home almost 20 years ago. It's about 3,200 square feet. The way things are in here right now, I do not feel like I'm at home. I don't feel like I'm in a place where I belong. I don't feel like a human being in this house. Most of my hoard consists of holiday decorations and seasonal decorations. I definitely have a lot. But I love them all. If I didn't love them, I wouldn't have them. In the family room, you'll find some garbage. You'll find some clothes, both clean and not clean. You will find used drink cups. I currently sleep in a chair. I do have beds upstairs that I could sleep in, but my lymphedema is bad. Going up the stairs is difficult, so I'd prefer to sleep in the chair. Walking into the kitchen, you see a filthy kitchen. You will see a sink wall that has dirty dishes and take out stuff that needs to be thrown away, emptied and thrown away. Um, we have a problem with the plumbing. So there are no working bathrooms in the house. Using the bathroom, I have a system set up where the paper products are collected and thrown out at the end of the day. It is absolutely horrible, demoralizing, awful and disgusting to live like this. I'm Melissa, and Carmen is my mom. The last time I was at my mother's house was several years ago. The condition of the home then was extreme. Uh, it was certainly cluttered, and there were lots of boxes, and there was disorganization. I am concerned that the house will be obviously much worse. I have concerns for her safety in the home, and I have concerns about just the standard of living that she's now accepted for herself as normal, and it's not normal. I got a call from my first love, Mike. We got together when I was 12. He was 15. We met at church, and we were together for about eight months. I knew that was the guy that God created for me. I just knew it. He calls me out of the blue 40 years later, and we saw each other, and it was it. It was over. We're doing this. We're finally getting it together. I'm sorry. This is hard when I talk about Michael. It's like it happened yesterday. My mom has really dealt with Mike's death um, by purchasing things and staying at home. She has closed herself off to her friends, to the family in lots of ways. Time stopped uh, when Mike died and it hasn't started again. 11 months after Michael's death, I had a problem with my neck and I ended up disabled. My job of over 20 years is gone, and I am without the only thing I have where I can go 
and not think about what's going on in the house, that Michael is gone, and then I'm forced to be here in the stuff, and I'm not physically able to do anything with the stuff, and that's driving me insane. I can't find my good jewelry, including my wedding ring, which is a sapphire set in two diamonds. And it's just getting worse around me, and I want to fix it, and I can't even make the decisions necessary to fix it. I died. I just died. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are excited to be here. We're excited to help too. Carmen. Yes. Good. I'm glad you're excited. I am Carolina Harvey, professional organizer and productivity expert. So Carmen, this is your daughter, Melissa, correct? Right. So we have Melissa here and her husband, Eric. Welcome. And Robin, Michael's sister, right? And Scott, your brother, Robin, correct? Yes. Welcome. It's great to have you guys here. We have a huge team to help you. We have the stand-up guys, we have the organizers, and we have Dr. Zazio to help you out. So Carmen, do you give us permission to start in from the front entryway? You can start wherever you want. All right, I like it, I like it. That's perfect. Is everybody ready? Yes. yes. All right, let's, let's do this, come on. This one's a little heavy. Let me just give you that one. one. We'll call it good. Oh, goodness. Michael's obituaries. That's when we had his memorial service. So we're going to keep or donate at this point, because there's probably not a lot of trash here, right? Linens, keep. Linens, you want to keep all the linens. Yep. How about we pull them all out first and see here? Oh, no, I'm keeping them all. You're going to keep them all? I know what they are. How many tables do you have? Two. So you want to keep all of them? There's none that you're yes. willing to donate? I want to keep them all. So if we run into more linens, are you going to get rid of some of those? Not if they're new, no. You said you want to keep these as well? Yep. There is going to be a point where you're not going to have enough space to store all the linens that you keep. And if I have to make another choice, I'll make it. They're for Easter. Can we donate those? No. So you want to keep these also? OK, video, DVD collection. Yeah, I'm keeping that. I've kind of been watching on the sidelines. You can tell you're getting a little bit elevated. Yes. We already knew that the new stuff was going to be tough for you. So don't mistake Carolina's pushing you for this idea that we want you to get rid of everything. At the end of the day, we just want to make sure you have room for everything. So Dr. Salzio, mm -hmm. when there's always a reason, how do we move forward? So this is where mom struggles. She sees value in all the stuff she purchased. Once again, what we have to get back to is where are we going to put all this stuff? Just work with us and know that we have your best interest at heart, and we are thinking about the big picture, OK? We don't want to put everything back in bins and boxes that you can't get to. I'm not going to push you. I'm going to really encourage you. All right. OK? and know that every day is gonna be just like today. We're gonna to walk you through every step. No surprises, no sneaky business. It's all gonna be just like we've done here. Okay. I am concerned that when the real volume starts to come out of the house, the challenge becomes completely different because there's always going to be a reason why it should stay. I can 
want you to take back your life. You think I don't want my life back, Melissa? Do you not think I want, I want a life? The hardest thing of all is the future I planned with my husband I know. is over. When Mike died, I died. I know that. You're not gonna be the same person, and I don't know what life on the other side of this looks like, but this is a den of grief and sadness and anger and shame and wretchedness. You are so buried. I don't know how to make you stop grieving. I haven't. That's the whole point. Mom, you have grieved. You've just grieved in the most destructive way possible. Maybe so, that's true. But I don't know how. I'm in this place where I want to let go of the old, welcome the new, and I want to move on with a life. It's hard. Eric, uh, Robin, and Scott, could I see you guys in the house really quickly, please? Sure, babe. Okay, so let's, let's have an honest conversation as a family. Sure. Okay? The reality of the situation is all of the has to come back into the house because there's no place else for it to go. So none of the problem is solved and can't with the hugs and overnight. kisses and the we understand. And it's not that we don't love her and it's not that we don't understand, but it is that we have a goal and an objective to accomplish. That is the reason there are eight people standing out there with nothing to do because nobody wants to hold her accountable to make the hard decision. And I get it. I don't want to do it either. But if I have to be the bad guy and be the only one to say, cut I the to do that, I you, know you it's are. not I know fair you for you I'm to do that. Right. I'm willing to You're do right. that. I've been I'm, said that right. since the beginning. So stop. That's you true. need to take a deep breath. That's true. That's you, fair. Okay. I listen, I'm hearing what you're saying. You know your mom better than anybody, OK? I, I hear what you're saying. So how about this? How about if we all go back in again and say, look, because you're not I, able to make any you're decisions, still, you're still struggling, we're going to extend today and try to make another run and another push to get rid of stuff. OK. OK? I can so with, with that. With, with that in, 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 in that respect, should should we hit it at, well, then fine, we're leaving, then no, not helping. No, no. Okay, OK, I'm just, well, no. yeah, OK, no. so I'm yeah. just, I understand the kids' uh, glove I, thing. I, I, I do. But I also understand we I've been in situations with We have to find ways to motivate her to go forward, not through threats. I, I, no, no, that's I, not a threat. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm trying. We'll, She'll then threaten you back and call your bluff. And we'll get there. So we'll get I don't want to get contentious with her. I promise. I've been her. there a couple times with her. And then after that point it's hits, the then it all comes okay. out. It all, right, all comes let's, out. Let's go back out, tell her that we're not going to shut down for the day, that we're going to give it another push. And I want all of you out there to observe her. And if she's not showing an increase an improvement, then you guys need to swoop in. Okay. Does that sound okay? I can live Okay. Thank you. All right, let's hit it. Okay. Melissa's tried the loving approach, but as the day continued, she just couldn't do it anymore. And interestingly enough, they're both in similar positions. Melissa, fearful that her mom is not gonna get this house in order. Carmen, fearful of letting go of their stuff. So we'll just have to see what happens. Okay, so we've set up the space so that you can look at all the different categories. Your household supplies, your craft supplies, your papers, furniture, dog supplies. I wanted you to see the volume of what you have. Okay, so we're gonna do a push, right? All hands on deck. You ready to do this? Yeah. All right, let's go. Okay, what about all your little pink baskets? This is supposed to go inside the furniture in the spare bedroom upstairs. I oh, need those. We're keeping those light bulbs we're keeping. Those are the new curtains for the breakfast room. Is, this, is that a keep box? Yes. Keep you back. We'll put those in Mama box on the side. All this is garage. That's for the laundry mat. OK, so that one we keep. Open that one up just to double check it. Desperate times sometimes call for desperate measures. Okay. 
Hello, Carter. Hi, Dad. I want to tell you we love you very much. Very much. We've been through a lot of problems together, and we have been able to solve all of them and move on. But you're confronted with a problem right now that seems like it's a river. It's a raging river, and it's just too big to cross. We wish we could be there with you. However, you have love runs that you're surrounded by who want the very best for you. Your mother and I view this event as an opportunity of a lifetime for you. And I am asking you, with all of our love, really, Carmen, to get rid of this stuff so you can lead a good life. Thank you, Dad. It, it means a lot to me that you were willing to talk to me. And I, I hear what you're saying. Yes. And it was better coming from you. There's a new life for you. Mm -hmm. OK, Dad. We're going to help you live it. Thank you, Grandpa. We love and appreciate you. We'll call you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. What did that mean for you? My dad is a Christian man. He's a good man. And I know he loves me. And it was nice to hear him say those things. Gives me a little bit more help. These items are a hindrance and a burden and prevent her from living the life that she deserves. And I think she really needed to hear her father say that to her and tell her that she deserved to have better and to do better and that she could do better and he would love and support her through that. You ready to get started? Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right, let's do it. Right. Let's okay. do it. Keep uh, donate. Well old machine here. Yeah. A little further. <laughs> Go. Leave. So these are donate? These are donate. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Can I have another donate box, please? Thank you. The shampoo donate. I am not keeping any of these things. We're in the bedroom, and everything seems to be going just fine. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, I, I... There's too many people here. I'm starting to get panicky. OK. I'm going to have to have a chair. OK. Do you feel like you're going to have a panic attack? Yeah. OK, I need to get her out of here. Take her back through that way, get her out. I know Carmen's anxiety level is heightened, so I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on her because the last thing that I need her to do is to have a panic attack and shut everything down. Deep breath. There you go. Now just breathe normal. What's going on? I'm, I'm okay, just making sure. Okay. Blood pressure's good. What is it? Blood pressure's 130 over 82. Wow. That's the best it's been. Wow. The best it's been since I've taken it. And you know what? If you make more decisions, it'll go down Fuck. to 120 over 72. <laughs> the past few days have been really overwhelming. We've been pushing her really hard. She's just getting worn down, and she needs to rest. I think that we need to come up with a plan B for your bedroom, because that is a massive job. I and need her in there. OK, but hang on a second. So the plan is, Melissa, okay. you're going to be in charge of the bedroom. OK. She okay. has indicated that all of Michael's clothes can go. Is that correct? I know there's a couple of things. Yeah, with the exception of a few items. Sure. And the sports memorabilia stuff. OK, I'll start that Does now. Does that sound OK? Yes, let's do that. OK. OK. okay. This is a donate. 
donate. Donate. Donate. Donate. You can Donate get rid of that. Anything important. We're in the final push today. I'm excited to keep going and get the house ready for Carmen and the family, but we still have every room to touch. The bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, the living room, the dining room, and our collectibles room. We need all hands on deck. Get rid of it. It's old. Okay. It's not old, but you can donate it because I don't like it. Are you keeping this? No. Okay. It's not fixable. Okay. Thank you. Welcome home. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh. Come on in. Oh gosh. Oh, it's incredible. Opening those front doors and looking into an entry that was clear and a dining room where we could have family gatherings and have those experiences that are so important to her and to our family. It's just, it's such a great experience and it's such a great feeling. I'm thrilled. Yeah? Yes. Speechless, To be able to come back into my dining room and enjoy it. I, this is phenomenal to me. It's beautiful. It is lovely. Okay. You're happy? Very. Okay. I couldn't be happier. Good. Truly. We're gonna continue on the tour. And while we're here, we don't want to ignore the elephant in the room, which is right behind you. So do a little about face there. So you wanted to keep 100% of your holiday decor and it's staring at you. I'm glad that it's all in one place. Yeah. And that it's all in front of me to make me see how much mm -hmm. I actually have. The volume you have. Right? Yeah, because that's insane. Wait, time out. Hey, oh what my did God. you just say? Hey, what did you just say? <laughs> it, is, it, 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 it wasn't it insane is. the no. way it was before, <laughs> but it true. is now. Yeah. Um, so. OK, but you recognize it. That's really good. Yes, I You do. recognize it's too much. Yes. Good. Over the last four days, we filled three dumpsters of trash. We filled one dumpster with donations and we opened over a thousand boxes. And the majority of it went back into the house and back into the garage. You still have a lot of stuff to go through. And I know your family said they're willing to support you and look through it with you. So I hope that still will happen so that you can pare down. I can manage this. Yes. I can stick with this yes. and I'm gonna have help. Yes. In Carmen's case, aftercare is going to be an essential process in order for her to continue her grief process and not revert back to hoarding behaviors. She feels very confident that that's not gonna happen, but the reality is the percentage of people that do revert back to hoarding behaviors is over 90%. So she really is still at risk, even though she's feeling very confident. this process comes full circle and we were looking for all of the treasures and it was always a needle in a haystack.
I was, I, I was over the moon to get my ring back on my finger where it belongs. Back on my ring. Thank you. You're welcome. It feels right to be wearing it, and I missed it a whole bunch. So I was really grateful. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed for everything that you've done for me in giving me a chance to start over. It's been the most incredible experience of my life. It really has. It's, it's been so positive. I'm not going to let you down. I'm not going to. I'm going to do you proud. Okay. It's not by any means about us, Carmen. That's it's right. about you and your relationship with your family. Absolutely. I'm so blessed with family. You really are. And you've demonstrated that through all your hard work. So I want to say welcome home. Thank you. Yes, very You're much. welcome. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful house, and right now it's in chaos. It's easy t to happen if you're interested in a lot of stuff and you collect it. You know, eventually things can get out of hand, and it's all my fault. My name is Dave. Carol is my wife. I think Carol is a hoarder, absolutely. Carol brings things in, but very little of it leaves. At this point, the house is full, and I mean full. <laughs> Sad is the condition of my house. I've always been interested in a lot of things. I've collected a lot of things. And I especially like that elusive thing that maybe I'm shopping for, you know, something special. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, the sound is beautiful. Thank you. We need a lot of energy for today. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. We've got one big mansion, <laughs> many rooms, and lots of stuff. So I've been in the house, and this is a massive hoard. This is huge. Carol, any last words? No, let's get on with the show. OK. With that, I'm going to take Carol's advice. Family members, I want you to start heading toward the front. Bio one, you need to suit up because you're going to be in the heavy of it. Let's go. <laughs> I actually can't believe how much I miscalculated. This is so massive. And believe me, we do not have all the rooms out yet. We've got 24 tarps full, and there's more coming out. We have filled 27 tons worth of trash, and we have one dumpster left. This is coming out from a single house, 27 tons. It's beyond, beyond. I'm pretty excited because the teams are working feverishly up on the second and third floors. The cleaning company is going like crazy and we're making progress. Unfortunately, my Bio One team has to leave. But the good news is I have friends and family who are coming in to help us stage the house and get this ready for this family.
I really never thought we'd make it to this point, but the house is really looking beautiful. Come on in, let's take a look around. You walk in the front door and the family is smiling and wide-eyed. Wow. Oh. What do you think? Oh. It's something else, huh? Amazing. It's wonderful. Oh, wow. Wonderful. It was delightful. This house is amazing. Wow. It was such an exciting feeling walking into the house. My eyes went right to the staircase. I wanted to see it clear, and I could see the beautiful stained glass window at the top of the landing. It's wonderful to know that there's a place for my dad and Carol to go, and they'll be comfortable. It's just relief. It's kind of like, finally, you know, you can breathe. So let's go straight across the hall there to what is now the bedroom. Oh, look at you guys have matching little beds. This is amazing. As the family goes from room to room, they can see that this is a place where Carol and Dave can live safely and comfortably, that there's a space for Carol to do her thing. There's a space for Dave to do his thing. There's places that the whole family can come together. It's just what this family needed. Oh my gosh, how wonderful. We all have some closure now. I'm really proud of the fact that the family was able to come together and I just look forward to spending some time in the house. I really do. <laughs> it's been a life-changing week and I hope that it's good for the family and it will continue to be good for the family. So We'll see what happens. It's a journey. OK. Carol? Yeah, that's fine. If I could just um, make sure you know that I hear you. Trust me. I will. If you didn't hear me, I'd let you know. <sighs> Carol. Carol is always quick to tell you how she is born on the wrong side of the tracks and she had to fight tooth and nail to get where she is today, and nobody's gonna take her step away from her, including me or any of her family members. No, get your ass out of my face. No. You know, it's not what Carol says, it's how she says it. I don't give a rat's ass about whether I look bad to anybody. If Carol doesn't wanna talk to you, then she completely turns her back away from you and just won't talk to you. And I'm left standing there saying, Carol, 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 nothing. Yeah, let me tell you what's inside this house. <sighs> Top to bottom, this is all. Carol's artwork, Carol's dolls, Carol's crafts, Carol's books, Carol's fabric, the toys, the beads, the color swatches, pens, pencils, galore. This is all Carol's. And actually, it looks kind of fun, you know, to be able to do all this stuff and play with it. But no, until you see the droppings from the rats and the mice, the odor and the mold, no. Are you ready? Ready. ready. Let's go. Once I get past the shock of that front staircase, like, yeah, yeah. I actually am able to put together an organizing process. Let's get going. Where I can see the framework and the structure of this beautiful mansion, and I can see the end result in my mind. And I know that my boss organizing team can't do this one alone. We need help. The outcome of this particular episode could never have happened without the local firefighters that we got through Dave Jr. and Dave Sr. These folks would come in in their fire trucks, hop out, run into the house, start helping us like they were fighting a fire, and just, wow, man and woman power. It was amazing. Then they would get the call, you know, suddenly the fire trucks were whirling, whoo, and off they would go. And then another team would roll in an hour later. This is freaking awesome. So between friends and family, the firefighters, the Bio One team, my boss organizers, we had about 50 people a day working on this place. And when you have a bunch of volunteers like that, working hard every single day, it always sets you up for a really great outcome. 
come on in. Let's take a look around. By far, this happens to be one of the most satisfying and memorable episodes I've done in the 11 years that I've been working on the show Orders. And I'll tell you what, none of us could have predicted the outcome for this family and for this house. Oh my gosh, how wonderful. So I really love doing this episode. I love this family and that's why I love doing this show. I'm Z Cobra, pro wrestling manager extraordinaire, classic championship wrestling. My life started to spiral out of control and it's still spiraling out of control. And somehow that spiral got in my house and it's like a tornado, it's just ripping everything up. I deserve to get the gold belt of hoarders, okay? I'm a sick individual. You don't ever want to climb into my mind and walk around because you ain't coming out sane. I'm JR, and I'm Cobra's friend from the world of professional wrestling. There's one and only one Cobra, and that's probably a good thing, but we love him for what he is. He's part cartoon character, he's part maybe carnival barker, part old school professional wrestler, and part Fred Santiago when it comes down to it. I'm Cobra, I'm always Cobra, you know? I always was Cobra. Kind of fits my persona, because I can be slow and easy like the snake. You know, I can even put somebody in, into like some somewhat of a hypnotic state at times, but then if I strike, it's gonna be fast, you know, and be over with. I'm William, and I'm Cobra's son. I'm Takara, I'm William's girlfriend. When I came into the relationship, William and Cobra were so close. They would go see movies together almost like every week. And as William's been wanting to clean up and get things taken care of, I saw the relationship kind of shift. It was almost like the roles reversed. William was the father, Cobra was the son, because William wanted to get things cleaned up. My mom passed away like five years ago. She, I mean, she, she was my world, you know? And then a year ago last March, I lost my dad, I lost my best friend. That about did to me, you know? That tore my world up. The house was messy, but after my grandparents passed, it just, the house turned into a wreck. I just kind of didn't care about anything after I lost my parents and everything went to, you know? The loneliness is the worst. The loneliness. My dad, I have his ashes right at the table where he sat to read the paper. I have him sitting in his chair there. And mom's ashes are in the room with me because she would always be in the living room with me. The loneliness really tears you up and just throws you into another downward spiral. Now he's at the house alone, it's depressing him more. And the condition of my dad's house, it definitely affects his health. So me and my girlfriend helped take care of my dad. My grandfather's legacy was his property, and my grandma wanted her ashes spread around the pond. So I don't want to get it back into the condition it once was. My dad really needs to get the house clean now because my girlfriend's pregnant and his house just can't be like that. He can't come out of that house and have a normal interaction with the baby. We don't want to raise a child and have to really restrict her time with him because of the condition that he's living in. That's uh, an old toy I keep around for people to play with if they come over. Cobra has come to the point where he's 
comfortable and he doesn't want to change. He doesn't feel the need to change. That's a really big hurdle right now is trying to get him to understand that change is good. I'm already trying to, to come out of this whatever, this downward spiral. I'm trying to make my way up. And then on top of that, so on top of making my life better, I got to make it better for my grandbaby and for them too. It's overwhelming, you know what I mean? Loneliness, depression, hoard, you know, it's all a vicious circle. It's terrible, it's, you know, welcome to my living hell, that's what it is. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. We've got a risky situation today, a very dangerous situation, which is dealing with the house. I would just mention briefly that I'm going to be by your side as we do this, Cobra. And my job is to both support you and challenge you. My name is Dr. David Tolan. I'm a psychologist and an expert in the study and treatment of hoarding disorder. OK. So there are going to be times that I'm going to try to get you to do things and think about things differently. Don't take it personally, but we got to make sure that this problem not only gets fixed now, but doesn't come back in the future. So I'm going to be working with you on behavioral change. Yeah. All right, in terms of being in the hoarding ring here, <laughs> I think this is round one. It's time for the SmackDown. Right? Yeah. Everybody with me? Ding, ding. Ding, ding. 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 <laughs> All right, let's go. Do it now. Go to your area, specifically. <laughs> right. Go and do it quickly. Come on this way. Quickly, move fast, <laughs> fast, fast. OK, careful coming in, everybody. What I want you to do is start here. I'm going to go up to the trailer and see how the SteriClean team is doing. But just start grabbing some random things. You might not even put them into bags. Just get some of these larger items and get him out the door, and I'll be back, OK? OK. The reason we're working in the mobile home as well is because I need to have that mobile home taken out of here so that William can get his new double-wide trailer in. Because if William's not on the property, then Cobra isn't taken care of. Dorothy's telling us that it's OK for us to go into the mobile home now. And I think this is important. Part of letting go involves saying goodbye. Come on in, Cobra. Why don't you stand yeah, right here? Yeah, looking on... around here. She was on the floor. So we're in here because we have a demo guy coming. Okay. And this, this structure is going to be flattened. OK. And I want you to be able to have time here to look, see, know what we're doing. It's time to say goodbye. And as we're looking around, there's a beautiful card from William to his dad. He made it for oh, me sweetheart. when he was younger. Look at that. What's that say? It says, I love you, Dad. That's beautiful. Yeah. William. Yeah. Does it look cute for the thanks. Mm -hmm. No, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Mm -hmm. How Appreciate old were you at the time? Oh, my god. Who knows? Somewhere in kindergarten to third grade, somewhere in that yeah. area. Yeah. Is this a keep? Damn right. Of course it is. He made it and feel the love, you know? Yeah. This is a big piece of Cobra's past. He's got a lot of fond memories in this mobile home. So I want him to be able to acknowledge that, say goodbye, and prepare to move on. So do you feel ready to let the place go? Oh, man. It's going to be rough, but I got to do it so, my, so they can put their foot so my granddaughter can be close to me, you know? Yeah. So sometimes you got to clear out the past to make way for the future. Yes. OK, that's what we're doing. I thought we would get a lot done yesterday. No, didn't. Today, I need Stericlean to get inside the house and begin working immediately. Bad news is we have to empty all the cabinets. 
right into a trash bag. Under the sink goes for sure. Whatever I leave open goes. Okay. Trash, 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 trash. All trash. Just take it and put it out there. It's all trash. We have a, another issue that's come up. And uh, we were talking about Taikara and William moving onto the property and setting up their own mobile home up in that area. And there's a concern that's been raised regarding the cars. I don't know, Taikara, do you want to talk about what your concern is? Well, my concern is just having them up so close to where we're going to be living. I was hoping that oh, they yeah. could be gone. They could be what? <laughs> removed. OK, well, number, number one, they'll never, never, never be gone. Okay, they never will never be gone off the property. Mm -hmm. And I am still trying to sell that Mustang. I still got it on Facebook. I still get calls about it. In fact, I got a call. A how long weeks were they ago. on Facebook? Though? I don't give it. But I think, like, how I mean, long? I got it on. I got it on there for fifteen hundred, and I've had offers of like nine hundred. Okay, they didn't come through. But somebody's gonna want to buy that damn thing. How many did I get rid of? I'm not worried about the ones you got rid of. Oh, I'm worried about the not. ones where you're we're not. where you're I'm going to put. I'm like worried a, about this was those. Like yesterday, more. I'm doing everything you want, and then it's more. You're the ones I'm kicking just, me down. I'm just well, pushing you because well, I'm not I would. I want to. I'm just telling you, I'm, I, no, I'm in I charge here, and I'll always be in charge here. Not you and William. But, I'm not okay. trying to be but anybody. Cobra, you're, you're acting as if you're being attacked, and oh, I don't I think you are being attacked. Oh, I am. It's gotten a hell of a lot worse than this. Not with me. I've done nothing this whole entire time since we've started this, but listen to what you've had to say and be the buffer between you two. You want to micromanage my sale of that car? Go right ahead. If we allowed Cobra to control the narrative, we would never actually get anything resolved. I want to keep us focused on the issue that Taikara raised, which is the cars. So I figured the best thing for us to do would be to go up, take a look at them, break from where we are, and talk about the cars. Doc, how am I supposed to get better if they're going to just come at me with all, all the time? I'm not sure I hear anybody coming at you. Well, <laughs> hey. How you doing? All right, how are you? Pretty good. You need to get rid of some of your cars. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you, they're, they're junk. They need to go. My name's Tony, and I am a scrapper. How are you coming at me like this? You're on my property telling me what I got to do with my car. He's like living in this imaginary world. His name's Fred, not Cobra. If you look here, the inspection ran out in 1987. Tony and Cobra go way back. And Tony was here about 10 years ago and offered good money to take these cars away. But Cobra refused because he felt that the cars were more valuable than that. And also, I'm not going to buy it. You're going to pay me to take it away. Well, maybe, you know, at 30 years, you might not want to hold on to it. So what do you think about losing the car? It really pisses me off. Sure, you know? that's a shame, and I appreciate that. But are you willing? You can get rid of the car if you want. OK. OK. So what's your thought as you watch the Mustang go? <sighs> Ever see money fly away? I don't see money flying away. I see hoarding flying away, you know? All right. Let's go. OK. We just want to head straight into the living room here, right. right? We're in here because we want to make sure to take the ashes that you have for your parents outside and keep them safe. So right. where here, can you tell me where they are so we can take them? And yeah, my, my mother's right here. OK. I just keep, keep her close to where I'm, I'm usually over here, you know? So this is an example of something that we really want to honor. 
I'm curious, as you hold mom's ashes here, I mean, what do you think about? I mean, what goes through your mind? Just, uh, I don't know, what a good mother and a good woman she was, you know? What do you think your parents would think about how you've been living? They'd probably be disgusted with what I let her get to, you know? What do you think your parents would say to you about today's clean out? They'd probably be happy that I was getting help, you know? Yeah. That kind of help I need, you know? Yeah. Did you do the caregiving in here for your parents? I took care of my mom till she passed in here. I took care of my dad up there. OK, so let's head there next. OK. My concern about Cobra is that he's a little bit stuck. Hanging on to everything that somebody touched and turning your house into a landfill isn't good for you. What he needs to be able to do is clear out some space in the home and clear out some space in his head that might allow him to actually appreciate the memory of his parents. Uh, he's even heavier yet. His ashes. We're going to take good care of him. I know you well. <laughs> I've put my trust in you. Does this bring up any emotions for you? Quite a bit, you know. I, I was yeah. really close with both my parents. How's your heart? It's lonely, you know, being here on my own, you know. <sighs> so. Yeah, you look you look like you're weighed down. Yeah, definitely. Just all the memories and thoughts and just everything kind of coming in on me, you know, doing all this, you know. Yeah. So we want to help you grieve by honoring your parents okay. rather than holding on to everything that they owned. OK. We're going to take mom and dad outside for some safekeeping, OK? Yeah. He needs to kind of let go. He needs to not only let go of some of these possessions and some of the junk that's around him, but he needs to let go of some of his grief. OK, everybody, what we need to do is just clear that stuff out of the living room. There's a couple of pieces of furniture. You know what's, where it's going. I need to take boxes, put them in the dining room. Then everything else goes into the living room. So head on in and start up. We are just scrambling all of the cleanup crew, the organizers. We've got couches and a bed that's coming in. We've got a washing machine coming in. thinking as you look around. Overwhelmed. Glad I'm standing by this railing so I can hold on to it. So this is a space where you can live happily and safely. Yeah. And that's what's really important. Right. I'm really happy to see how much the house has been transformed. I mean, this was up to your eyeballs in clutter. And now this is a place where Cobra can live comfortably and safely. I'm actually really pleased with the result here. What I wanted to make happen for Cobra, William, and Taikara is that Cobra has a place to sleep. He does. A place to cook and eat. Kitchen. Done. A dining room in which to have members of the family and friends come over. He's got it. And Cobra, you want to tell the two of them what this is? Bassinet for the baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very funny, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to do something for him. Thanks for all the help, you know, and everything. And uh, just wanted to have something nice for the baby. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm sure yeah. she'll send it over to you. Really enjoy that. And he did say, it's not from the house. Brand new. <laughs> nice. And this is actually from Dr. Tolan and from me. We do want to give you <laughs> your new championship belt 
of de hoarding. There it is. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, what do we do? Do we do this? Yeah. Woo! I can see that Cobra is pleased. And I think he's pleased not only because of the progress that Dorothy and her team have made, but I think he's pleased with his own actions here because he had to make a lot of really tough choices. And I think it's paid off for him, and I think he sees that. Well, let me tell you something. Cobra got the gold belt of non-hoarding. And my future's so bright, I got to wear shades. Cobra out. I'm relieved because cleaning up the property and getting it prepared for our family, it was a stressful process. And William, he's always wanted to be up here with his father so they could have these memories and he could build on to what he had up at this property. What would your parents think about what's been done here these last few days? They would love it, you know. They, they would love it. Yeah. Yeah. Got the house back, you know, yeah. Yeah. So. One way of honoring them is to take care of the house that they right. loved so much and right. that you grew up in. Right. right. Taking good care of it is a way of honoring them, and it's a way of honoring you, too. Yeah. Because you're worth it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for all your help. Of course. Appreciate you. Hi. Thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.